Chief! You don't have to yell, Mookie. I can hear you just fine. It's an emergency. Sharon's drowning in the e pool. Come quickly. I'm right above you. I'll be right there. Hurry, Chief! I was study in the aftermath of World War II, and there was a lot of interest and concern at that time about those events and how that uh, the events of the Second World War could have happened. Also at that time then, the aftermath of Vietnam, and again, a lot of interest in the atrocities that took place in that event and the, the murder of many civilians by soldiers in that war. At the beginning of this study, the prisoners were arrested at their homes by real police officers and were taken off to the local police station. Now, this was not something which they had signed up for, and they were surprised, understandably, by this event, and they asked the police officers what was the relationship between this event and their signing up for a psychology study. And the police officers refused to be drawn into this conversation. So this was a very unsettling way of starting the study. Simbardo brought them to a mock-up of a prison, which he created in the basement of the psychology department at Stanford University. What he did then was to divide his group into prisoners and into, into guards. The guards had a guard's uniform and they had sunglasses and they had a stick, and the prisoners wore loose-fitting smocks and sandals. The guards now fell into their job. Some of them liked it, some of them disliked it, but it was a job that they did. They gave commands, and now what happened is the prisoners followed them. They now taunt, humiliate, degrade the prisoners in front of each other, and they exert arbitrary control over the prisoners. Zimbardo was wanting to move away from the idea that we can explain extreme behaviour by reference to individual personality characteristics, and wanting to move instead towards an explanation which focused on social structural factors as an explanation for behaviour. <laughs> Okay, Mookie, let's slide on into home. Hurry up and get out, Mookie. Where's the key, Chief? You mean this? Thanks, I'll go first. Can't wait to get a look at the top secret weapons. <laughs> According to psychologist Leon Festinger, whenever we choose to do something that conflicts with our prior beliefs, feelings, or values, a state of cognitive dissonance is created in us. A tension between what we think and what we do. When this tension makes us uncomfortable enough, we're motivated to reduce it in a number of ways. We may change the way we think about the decision, or try to change how others think about it so that they can support our decision. Or we may change some aspect of our behavior so that our decision seems more in character with us. In other words, we try to reduce the dissonance between how we think we should act and how we actually act by changing one or the other. Time after time, we have seen what follows. He reduces the dissonance by changing his opinion about the dullness of the task. Yo, Miskiff, I had a friend of mine who owns a laser-guided engraving machine made this custom sign. I don't know a lot about how the tool works, but it looks like a sideways drill or something. I wanted to send you a gift uh, because you've given me so much in the time I've been following, about 10 months. I'm pretty new. Anyways, as much as chat loves to see you fail in your runs, we love to see you succeed and crush your PBs.
The mentality of keep going until I'm better than my previous best is a really good message for life. Happy to say that I'm starting to do better in my life. friend just kidding I'll go to commander Clancy's room 